Welcome to Art History with Jackie. Today, we are going to be looking at the life and work of Piet Mondrian, a man regarded as one of the greatest artists of the 20th century and a pioneer of 20th century abstract art. Mondrian was born in the Netherlands in 1872. He was introduced to art from an early age. His father was a drawing teacher. Mondrian entered the Academy for Fine Art in Amsterdam in 1892. He was already a qualified teacher at that time. During this period, his painting was mostly naturalistic or impressionistic, consisting largely of landscapes. These paintings were representative of the art movements that influenced Mondrian, including pointillism and the vivid colors of fauvism. Mondrian's earliest paintings that begin to show the abstraction he became known for are a series of canvases from 1905 to 1908 that depict scenes of indistinct trees and houses reflected in water. Mondrian's art was intimately related to his spiritual and philosophical studies. In 1908, he became interested in the Theosophical movement started by Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. This movement significantly affected the further development of his aesthetic. Blavatsky believed it was possible to attain a more profound knowledge of nature than what we can get from our five senses, and much of Mondrian's work for the rest of his life was inspired by his search for this spiritual knowledge. In 1911, Mondrian moved to Paris and fell in love with the Parisian avant-garde. While in Paris, the influence of the Cubist style of Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque appeared almost immediately in Mondrian's work. However, unlike the Cubists, Mondrian still attempted to re reconcile his painting with his spiritual pursuits. In 1914, when World War I broke out, Mondrian was visiting the Netherlands, where he then stayed for the remainder of the war. During this period, he stayed at the Laren Artists' Colony. There, he was influenced by Bart van der Leck, who only used primary colors in his art, as you can see in the top image. With Theo van Dosberg, Mondrian founded De Stil, translated to The Style. This was a magazine in which he first published essays defining his theory, which he called neoplasticism. When World War I ended in 1918, Mondrian returned to France, where he remained until 1938. Immersed in post-war Paris culture, he embraced the art of pure abstraction for the rest of his life. He began producing grid-based paintings in late 1919, and in 1920, the style for which he came to be renowned began to appear. In the early paintings of this style, the lines delineating the grids are thin and they are gray, not black. They also tend to fade as they approach the edge of the painting rather than stopping abruptly. The forms themselves, smaller and more numerous than in larger paintings, are filled with primary colors, black or gray, and nearly all of them are colored. During 1920 and 1921, Mondrian's paintings arrive at what is what is to observers their definitive and well-known form. Thick black lines now separate the forms, which are larger and fewer in number. Also, more of the forms are left white. As the years passed and Mondrian's work evolved, he began extending all of the lines to the edges of the canvas. He began to use fewer and fewer colored forms, favoring white instead. In the mid-1920s, he began creating lozenge works that are characterized by their square canvas tilted to a diamond shape. Mondrian's paintings are not composed of perfectly flat planes, as one would expect. Subtle brushstrokes are evident throughout his work. The black lines tend to have the least amount of depth. The colored forms have the most obvious brushstrokes, all running in one direction. Most interesting are the white forms, which clearly have been painted in layers using brush strokes that go in different directions. This generates a greater sense of depth in the white forms. As his work progressed, lines began to take precedence over form in Mondrian's painting. Thin, thick, double lines, he experimented with all forms to give his paintings more dynamism. I'll leave you today by asking, what are you more drawn to in Mondrian's work? The lines? or the forms. Thanks and see you next week.